Hi, it's Beth. I just wanted to take a minute during this Father's Day weekend and tell you thank you for all of you who have been a presence in the life of a child without a dad. Some of you have done that in, um, by providing for kids. Some of you have been child sponsors. Some of you have been mentors and disciplers to kids in your community and to kids back-to-back -back serves around the world. And I just really want to take a minute and thank you. You remind kids. You remind them what they're capable of. I... I grew up playing basketball, which is kind of funny. I mean, once upon a time, I was the tallest girl on the court. But as everybody continued to grow, they kept pushing me farther and farther out in the key uh, because I was not growing at all. By the time I was a high school student, I was the point guard because that's where you put the people who are the, the shortest. And the only way I would ever get any action in a basketball game is to have a good outside shot where I could throw it up before somebody thought they should defend me. And we were in a Christmas tournament my high school Kings versus a rival high school Mason. And we'd gotten ourselves in the tournament all the way to the final game when we were playing against Mason. And we were in the last minute of the game and we were tied. And I hadn't scored any points in the whole game. And the, my coach called a timeout and said, okay, Beth, here's what I wanna do. You are really good at that three point shot and they're not gonna expect you to throw it because you haven't done anything this whole game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass up the ball. I'm gonna get the ball passed to you you square up and make that three-pointer and we'll surprise everyone and go home with the winners. And I said, okay, I'm on it. I can't wait. So when the ball came to me, it was exactly the way I had imagined it a million times before. I squared up and took that shot, a shot that I had made a thousand times in practice. And I missed the shot and the buzzer went off and we lost the game and we all went into the locker room. And I decided to linger in there because I didn't want to walk out and see the pitying faces of my teammates, friends, the parents, and I didn't want to see them. So when I finally came out of the locker room, the only one that was left out there was my dad. And he walked me in through the gym and he had a basketball in his hand and he bounced past me the ball and he told me to shoot from where it was I had missed it. And I thought he was being very mean. And I was like mad and kind of crying and pouting and I shot the basket. And of course, without any pressure around me, I made it. And he rebounded my ball and passed it to me again and said, do it again. And now I was definitely sure he was being mean and I squared up and I shot it again. And of course I made it without any pressure and he caught that ball and he bounced past it to me again. He goes, do it again. And we did it enough times until I was finally almost beside myself. And I, he came over and gave me a big hug and he said, I'm not punishing you. I just want to make sure when you go to bed tonight, you remember what it is that you're capable of. And I look back on that and I think, man, he wanted me to remember that the last thing I do doesn't define me. That God gave me in that moment a gift and a talent that he wanted to remind me that I had so that I would be willing to offer it again. And that's what, that's what father figures can do in our life. They can call out the best in us. They can show us what our potential is. They can help us cast a vision for our future. And so dads, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the ways you do that in your own homes. I'm grateful for the ways that you've done it through back-to-back -to, -back to kids around the world. Thank you for how you have loved unorphaned and vulnerable children.